What's going on everyone? This is Impulse and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 6. New intro hype! <laughs> okay, well, maybe not. Maybe not. That was the old intro. Well, new old intro makes a return. Yeah, my bad, guys. My bad. You know, we're on episode 60 here of Hermitcraft Season 6, and I, I was getting a little antsy, I guess. I just felt like I needed a change of some sort, so I decided in all my brilliance to get rid of my intro and play some music over the this part of the video and yeah it it made it didn't work it didn't work you know sometimes you try to change things up and it's not for the better and i learned my lesson thanks to you guys you guys relayed the fact that uh it was not better than this i suppose so we are back to normal we're back to the old in intro and yeah we will uh, I'll, I'll leave it that way for a while before i try anything new again but uh, thanks for letting me know guys appreciate the feedback the honest Feedback is always appreciated, especially when it's constructive, of course. I'm always trying to make things better and willing to listen to you guys. Of course, you're the experts. You are the ones consuming the content, and I want to make sure it's the best possible content for you guys to consume. So, yeah, we have a problem here. We have a problem here. Um, I need to sort more villagers. Remember last episode we made a pumpkin farm and I was like, oh, I'm going to use all these pumpkins to do some trading. And then I came back here to do some trading and there's just a hodgepodge of villagers everywhere. And they are completely out of order and we need to do some more sorting and things like that. I made a bigger chamber because they're getting suffocated and it's so... I think we got so many in there now that they're going to start suffocating again. Uh, I was playing around with how to pick these guys up and... This is what I came up with. I'm kind of pushing water into the corner here, and then these guys are all huddled in the corner, as you can see. So a minecart will pick these up, but I wasn't really forward thinking here. I was thinking I would just kind of put them over here and look at them and see, hey, man, what do you got here? You got any good trades? No? Okay, goodbye. And I'd kill them. And then if they were good, I'd... Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry. Hey, just, just... Sorry. I feel bad but at least I got something out of it. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, no place to really put the good ones. So I need like my own personal kind of haul of villagers to store good ones for my own personal trading. I'm being a little selfish here. I'm not gonna put them in eye trade just yet, but uh, yeah, I'm thinking I need to make a expanded space here and I have a decision, a decision to make guys. Let's see if this works by the way. Let's see if we push one in there. Yeah, there you go. Picks them up straight away. So. Why did you stop though? Oh, because I got a glass block here, because I'm smart. It's MRT. So yeah, I need to make a space to store these guys. And I could go this way. There's not really much happening this way. In fact, I used to like AFK in this spot. There's not much going on down here. It kind of goes behind my skelly spawner room if we keep going. So I could dig this out and send them this way, but I'm actually leaning towards going back in this direction. I'm probably gonna break something here. Yeah. Um oop. So I'm thinking I can go back in this direction instead, and that way it, they'll kind of flow up and over and into a chamber and then back that way instead of this weird thing that I've set up. So I'm going to rearrange this a bit, do a little digging, see what kind of space we have back there. And uh, I think there's other cave systems and stuff that we may run into, so it actually might be kind of cool to see what, what's, what's going on back there. Oh, that's nice. A little room to breathe in here. That is so much better. We don't have villagers in our face the second we come through this door, which... Actually, did I put it at the right level? Yeah, obviously. I just walked through it. it I, uh, for some reason, I was just thinking this whole wall opens up. I don't know what I was just thinking. Uh, anyway, yeah, we are good. We get a step up on here. I moved uh, the guys that were just kind of hanging out in here up here just against this back wall here and took out the ones that were in the chamber. And it sounds like there's a pigment or something walking around. We're getting more in here so you can see I now moved the little holding chamber to over here. So it's kind of cool. You got like this whole wall of, you know, things going on. The villagers come down here, the babies grow up, and then they come over here, they get dropped into here, and the water pushes them into this corner, which means now, of course, if I had a track on me, I could demonstrate this a little better. Let me grab a few of these guys. Um, so now we can grab them right there off of that corner and then lead them wherever we want. So I can just power that block and throw down a cart and it should pick up the guys. Let's see what we get. Let's uh, let's play the uh, the villager lottery real quick. All right, what are we gonna get? There's, there's. It looks to me like we're gonna get a white coat because he's closest to the corner. Yep, <laughs> first try. All right, and mending for super cheap, right? No, spite, smite one. 
not great. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. We'll, we'll we'll give your other trades a chance later. Um, so I've been keeping the brown coat, coats because uh, string is good. I have a lot of string from my spider farm. The farmers are good because that's what I want because I'm going to trade pumpkins and stuff. Uh, now, the pumpkin trade, mm, I can't remember. Is 11 the best pumpkin trade? Um, somewhere I have a chart that I can look at. For farmers, the best pumpkin trade is actually 8. Uh, and it goes all the way up to 13. So, yeah, 11 somewhere in the middle. So, he's not great. I could, I could do better uh, by continuing to sift through these guys looking for that perfect farmer guy. Uh, we got some librarians in here. I've been just kind of keeping these guys just to see what they got. I mean, channeling for 13 is pretty good. Aqua Affinity for 6 seems super cheap. So, yeah, some of these guys got decent trades. Fortune 2, uh, not bad, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I've been keeping these around just to kind of see. These are the guys I'm going to be doing stuff with today, I think. Um, potentially in a live stream with Tango. I'm getting getting geared up to get a live stream going. Something I haven't done uh, yet in 2019. I've been just really busy on the Friday nights when we typically do these live streams. So, we got a guy here for 40 rotten flesh. That's not actually that great for a click click. It's the worst actually. 36 is the best we can get. Uh, and then gold 8 is the best we can get. And there's zombies that want to eat all these guys' faces. <laughs> uh, what does this guy have? 40 again, but 8 on the gold. So decent gold trade, not a great rotten flesh trade. Uh, and what I'm thinking is these clerics will be useful because if we could get them up by the gold farm where I have tons of gold and rotten flesh being collected, there is yet another way to get emeralds. So, kind of like I mentioned last episode, the whole idea of, of you know what I'm doing right now is trying to beef up my villager trading because I want to get a ton of emeralds so that I can use these librarians for more, uh, what do we, name tags, right? My, my team needs name tags. We want to name knobs. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing with them, but we're going to, we need a lot. So I'm going to try to help out. And yeah, in order to do that, I had to beef up my operations. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, going to do stuff with clerics and that trading hall. Hopefully we get some decent villagers in here. But now I'm at that stage where I need to, to figure out where I'm going to put them, right? There's this back wall. Of course, I could, I could put these guys in cells in this wall. And I want to try to make it so that it's semi-smart, like all the materials that you need for trading with them is kind of right nearby, so you can just grab, trade, and go type of thing. So I want to design something that's going to work pretty good for trading and cut down on all the time it takes. Looks like we're still getting more babies coming in. I'm really hoping to get a few more clerics, to be honest, because, yeah, this live stream's coming up, and Tango and I, we need to, uh, we're going to be moving some villagers. Oh, by the way, uh, I stopped posting the live streams on the main channel. I've been posting them on, I have a second channel, Impulse SV2, the number two, not spelled out. And uh, I'll put a link in the description. I think I always have one in there, actually. Uh, if you guys don't get a chance to see the, the streams live on the Friday nights that we do them, then you can catch it usually on the second channel the next day or so. So you can still watch them there. But uh, yeah, I decided to start putting those over there. And I'm just going to design some trading hall spaces for these guys at this point while I'm waiting around for the live stream to start. So all right, I'll be right back. All right, so I've been playing around with a few designs designs for a little bit and I kind of landed on this one. I want to keep it nice and simple and we got some of the stripped birch logs here. Got some of the white concrete back there to keep it nice and bright. Threw in a light just to make sure we don't have any mob spawning or anything like that and also just kind of light the whole thing up. I always like doing this, putting a hopper in there because sometimes when you're trading with villagers, you'll accidentally like throw something and then there's no good way to get it back. So by having that hopper there it should just end up in this chest. We can get that out if we accidentally throw anything at the villager. So those are good to have. So I'm going to build these kind of side by side. So we'll have like the bay, the next bay would actually be like right here. So another villager. And if you're wondering why am I not just kind of doing this thing where we have the villagers side by side, um, I 
want to make sure they're not trying to breed with each other. If they end up like getting food and stuff, they could get willing to breed. If Actually, when you trade with them, as soon as I do my first trade with these guys, it's going to make them willing to breed, and we're going to start seeing hearts and things like that. And if they're close to each other, they're going to make babies, and I don't want guys running around out here because these guys decided to breed, so I'm just going to keep them separated. So those of you that got an offspring song in your head, you're cool. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get more of these cells in and probably gonna have to extend this quite a bit. And like I said, there's like caves and stuff. Here we go. Yep, there's caves and stuff around here. Hi, guy, you're holding a, a slime ball. So you're never gonna despawn. So that's that's why you have to die. Um, I don't know if there's any more in here, but yeah, this happens all the time. Oh my goodness. All right, let's do a little exploring real quick. We'll probably die. Um, I saw a guy, I don't know how I get to them. I saw him, he's kind of up here, right? Uh, we need to keep this place. These guys will kind of collect, and we don't want to cause lag because we've got a bunch of zombies just hanging out. I suppose if I left the area, though, they would despawn as long as they're not holding anything. I do have some barriers up to try to keep them from getting too close to my villagers and to my base. And, yeah, they can't get over this way. Anyway, so, yeah, there's a big big little cave system back here. How did I get in here that quickly? I got lost. Here we go. All right, and let's just do that. There we go. Now they can't get through there. All right, let's go. Let's go back. I got a little sidetracked. I hear a zombie, and, and I wanted to just take him out. But, yeah, we'll have to build some more bays. I'm going to keep cutting this way. Let's see real quick. If I cut this way, how far? Yeah, I knew there was another system in fact this is like a ravine in here so we got to be very careful and eventually i'd like to do some cool stuff with ravines as part of my base so i'm not sure how big this one actually is let's see if it goes back a bit pretty cool pretty cool yeah i want to integrate this somehow into my base the thing with ravines is always these sections right these little balconies up there that uh, creepers can just decide to jump down onto your face from. So, yeah, you can die too. We don't need zombies hanging out, like I said. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, this is cool. This is really cool. It goes all the way around the corner. Yep, balcony. You were on the balcony, weren't you, guy? Just like I said, you can die now. <laughs> this is cool. Okay, it goes all the way back there. Uh, look at me now. So sidetracked. So sidetracked. I want to see where this goes. I haven't really been... Yeah, you can see it's dark back here, so I haven't really been there. But it looks like that's kind of the back wall to this ravine. Whoa! Okay, thanks. Whatever just went off on my computer and beeped in my ear. That was weird. <laughs> all right, so... Again! I don't need you. I don't know why you're beeping. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to get back to building some of these uh, stalls up for these guys, and i got to decide how many to do and how far we're going to go. So, more decisions to make. Yep. <laughs> I'm getting XP because the live stream is coming gone, and Tango, he sort of killed me. And, um, I think on purpose, but <laughs> I ended up losing a lot of gear. If you guys are curious what kind of shenanigans go on in the live streams, look at how this went down. Oh. Here, let me help you out. Oh! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> so yeah, don't recommend sleeping in bed in the nether. I was actually trying to set him up to accidentally sleep in the bed as he came back from being AFK for a second. And uh, he decided to be a good idea to sleep anyway, but he waited till I got near and that explosion, it made us lose quite a bit of stuff. I have some borrowed gear. It's like Tango's backup, backup gear is like his third set of gear, I guess. Uh, my elytra made it through, my bow made it through, my pickaxe made it through, but that was about it. Everything else is gone. So I decided after the stream was over, I was going to AFK here at the gold farm the entire night. And oddly enough, I didn't get kicked from the server for once. So yeah, it's been 12 hours, I think, or maybe 11-ish uh, since I started AFK in here. And I have 435 levels, which I'm probably going to use all of uh, trying to get new gear. So I think I'm about done here. want to show you what we did in the live stream. I sort of mentioned it um, that 
I wanted to get some villagers on top of the nether. I suppose I have an elytra. I can fly. <laughs> kind of got used to having no gear. This was the scene of the crime about right here is where that went down. But anyway, we were successfully able to move a few villagers up here. Um, actually got three. I was only going to do two. But the, the first one we kind of did, it doesn't have great trades. Here, let me get my uh, sound back up. I had it down because those piggies are super loud. There we go. Uh, so we got this guy. He's a 39 for the rotten flesh and a 9 for gold. So not great, but I figured we would probably accidentally kill these guys for trying to bring him up. So he was kind of our test case, and he made it just fine. No problem. Uh, so then we brought up one that's a little better. 37 for the rotten flesh, 8 for the gold. Uh, that is the cheapest gold trade, and I think 36, like I said, was the cheapest rotten flesh. So we were pretty close on that. And then we got this guy with 39. Not great with the rotten flesh, but good with the gold as well. And let's see. This should have been collecting. I think we're probably completely, yeah, we're like completely full of all the rotten flesh. Um, I forget. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to have shulker boxes here to fill up and take back with me. So I need to put that in. Oh, yeah, look at this. All this gold coming in from me, AFK. Uh, how far did these go? Looks like about the third row or so. Yeah, nice. So we have two full stacks here, and it started to fill up that one. Let's see if it's the same case over here. Not so much. Probably closer to a little bit less on this side. But we got a lot more gold now, so I'll be able to trade with these guys. It's nice having them here. I think they're safe. I, I need to replace these so that we can get to these chests. Kind of did the same deal where they're off, they're sitting on top of hopper uh, hoppers there in case we throw stuff. And then my ultra secure security system goes in right there. So I keep hearing a gas, and I always expect them to be up here, but they're really... I guess they could maybe spawn on something like that. I got to take that down. But, uh, yeah, this was for moving the gas to the defense tower, and I'm done with that now, so I can definitely tear this out. Anyway, when I get back down to the base, I've done a little more work there in setting up our villager trading stations, and I want to show you what I've done. So I've changed my mind a few times in here now this episode already, but I decided just doing a long hallway straight through was kind of boring. So I decided to make a room out of it basically. So I dug out this room, I started kind of marking where different things would go. And I think what we're gonna do is kind of have a center aisle that goes along here. We'll have a villager kind of standing here facing that way, a wall in between and another one facing this way. And we still have lots of mobs around. I gotta light up things better. Uh, and then we're gonna to have also along the sides here and we're gonna be able to fit quite a lot in here because I actually have 10 cells along each wall which means we're gonna have another 10 here another 10 here that's 40 right there plus an additional I don't know what I'm gonna do with this it wasn't symmetrical if I tried to just do single ones so maybe maybe four maybe five or six if I put two together here maybe I don't know we'll find out but uh, yeah I need to now build up all these cells I need to get a lot of these guys in place I don't know that I'm gonna keep all of these guys um, I was collecting some of these clerics, but these guys aren't great, at least for the uh, rotten flesh trades. Yeah, that one's not great. Uh, so, and we're getting more in here. I think I haven't been in here, you know, since this before the stream. So, I think they are uh, done not having bread in a while. Maybe I don't know. Uh, looks like we don't have any babies in there, so we'll, we'll wait and see if we get more. But I got to sift through all these guys as well, and we'll get these guys in place. I'll get this built up. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to store trading goods. I didn't really leave a lot of space in this design to do so. So I'm wondering if maybe I can sneak. If I put this is this is raising my curiosity now. If I was to put a shulker box under there, would the fence stop it from opening? Yeah, it would. I, I, I thought as much. <laughs> Couldn't be like, oh, now I can't get to it. Come on now. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, I want to basically store a shulker box somewhere so that we can have like trading goods. Maybe I'll do something with the ceiling. And then we can use the color of the shulker boxes to continue to make it look good. That might work. And then you can trade and just look up, grab things out of there, and continue trading. That could be pretty cool, actually. So that will help with the ceiling design as well. So let me get all these trading cells built up, get all these villagers kind of pushed into some spots, and then we'll continue trying to design this thing a little further. Looking good. I've done quite a bit of work in here, built up all the cells, and actually moved all those villagers that were hanging out back here into them. And I've made a, a few more decisions here. I think these two rows, I'm gonna keep strictly the librarians so that I can get some good 
trades from these guys. You can see I still got to unlock them. I don't even know what they may have in store here. Uh, I don't know what to do about this either. Some of these guys have fallen into the hopper a bit, and so they're down a little bit lower, and some have not. I almost wish it was one or the other. I, I don't I guess I have a little more preference for them to be on top of it. We've been through this before. Once you put carpet on there, I don't think there's enough room because of the ceiling there. So uh, I may have to make some changes to this to get these guys to raise up, but that's okay. For now, they will do. They're in there safe and sound, and I'll work on unlocking them. So yeah, these two rows here are going to be librarians, and then I think this row here, I'm gonna keep brown coats. Um, don't care if it's farmer or fisherman or shepherds or what have you, uh, but I wanna have it all brown coats, and I'll probably, I'm trying to think, should I label these? Maybe put a sign or something right here, hanging down a bit, and that would kinda cover the hop review and things like that. That might look good. And that I can mark what these guys are and on this side it's going to be kind of more random things so I have the clerics I still have the hitboxes on from getting them out of their carts to turn that off it is so noisy with the mobs I have to get out of here and and you know light up all the caves and things so that we don't have zombies tracking these villagers from miles away so a lot of work to do there but uh, one thing I wanted to show you I had mentioned this back wall was not symmetrical well that's because I'm a dum-dum and I had this kind of here and so there's only like a one wide gap in in between instead of the two so yeah once I move this over one more block to match this side we were able to get six full cells in here so we got one two three four five six so we got a back wall willing to uh, store six more villagers so we got 46 total villagers wait no 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 we don't we don't that's wrong because <laughs> I think only eight on the side one two three four five six seven eight so we'd have 10 20 28 36 and then 42 so well 42 villagers there we go quick math for you guys and uh, yeah I think it's looking good I'm gonna put a, a better pathway in here as well we talked about what to do with the ceiling with shulker boxes and stuff that's gonna look pretty cool the other thing I started to work on was this bit because I want to get these guys out and I probably you know the way I got these guys in their cells was actually by using tracks and kind of escorting them on a track over to about here and then kind of just pushing them in and then you know boxing them in with with these slabs and trapdoors the trapdoors are there just to make sure if like a baby zombie was to get in here he couldn't just hop up and over into this little gap here so that's gonna keep them out these guys are are pretty safe I went back and checked to make sure nothing can get them through the corners um, but there is quite a few zombies piling up back there. So anyway, since I'm going to kind of get them in their cells via carts, I figured it might be nice to have a little bit of a, a way to decide whether or not I want to keep these guys. So for instance, this guy's a fisherman, and I have a lot of string, and 15 is actually, I think, better than the one we had over here. Let's go take a look real quick. I think it was like 17, if I remember right. Yeah, 17. So in this case, I could potentially either keep him as yet another fisherman to, to trade string with, or I could replace him. And so in this case, I could say, yeah, I want to keep this guy. He seems like a good trade. Flip that switch. I uh, need to turn this into a power rail and then hit a button. And I'll clean all this up and make it look good, of course. But then we can send him on his way. Just have to lay down some temporary track to where he's going, and that will work just fine. And then I can switch that back to get another guy. In fact, what happens if it comes out? Will it go? It'll probably go straight, I'm assuming. All right, more science to do. Hang on. Let's get a cart. Let's see. My assumption is he's going to come out, and he's just going to keep going straight. But we're going to find out real quick. Yeah, that's what I assumed. And these also, I'm thinking I want to start keeping toolsmiths and armors and things like that. And I'll probably put them on this back wall here where we're going to have a mixed bag of villagers. I'll probably keep them because I want to start trading w for diamond tools and getting my diamond tools that way instead of spending my precious diamonds. So I'm going to keep him anyway. But let's grab one more and kind of just show the whole way this works here. So pop in a minecart. Probably we'll uh, do some sort of ejection system. Maybe have a dispenser right here that pops out, grabs them through the corner. And then I can say, oh another toolsmith so maybe I trade with both these guys see which one's better and uh, the winner gets to gets to live <laughs> in a cell 
you know, one by one cell. Anyway, so yeah, this is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to continue building this up. But um, that's all I'm going to have time for today. So we'll continue this project. We'll continue cleaning this place up. We'll continue spawn proofing the outer areas. And probably in between episodes, I'm going to spend some levels and get better gear. So a lot to do, but uh, that's, that's all right. It's a fun project. I love working with villagers, as you guys probably know from my history and already what I've done this season. They're just such a fun game mechanic to uh, to have these guys, and I've always thought trading's pretty cool. So I've heard some stuff about trading getting nerfed in 1.14. I really hope that's not the case because I really enjoy trading, and I'd hate to see it uh, get you know, a nerf or, or whatever and them to have less trades and it to be less fun. So Mo Yang, please don't do that. <laughs> please. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did hit that like button, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe before you go. And with that said, I'll see you guys again next time. Have a good one, everyone.